to complete the square, there, there's some steps here, and they can be kind of annoying, but we just have to live with it. Uh, the first step is that you, you get the variable terms on one side, get the variable terms on one side, and the constant on the other side. <coughs> Basically, you are separating these guys. Get your variables on one side, constants on the other. This is how you start to set up completing the square. The second step is that you divide, Whoa. divide all terms by the coefficient of, x. of not of x, but the coefficient of x squared. 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 See, in order to complete the square, you have to have a coefficient of 1 for the x squared. And when you do that, then you can do the next part. The next part is where we actually complete the square. We complete the square by adding the appropriate amount to both sides. Now that appropriate amount that we're talking about, this is where we do um, half the coefficient of x and then squared. That's the amount that we add to both sides. You may remember the little jingle, divide by 2 and square it. Divide by 2 and square it. Divide by two and s okay. We don't have to go there. It's okay. You can be grumpy britches. Not no problem. Grumpy yes, you heard me. Grumpy britches. <laughs> you factor the left side. You factor as a binomial square. See, that's you. You create a square. And once you have created a square we use the square root property to finish. Okay. There are other videos that we have under the playlist solving quadratic equations that you see we go through a lot of these examples. So let me just go through a couple of these for you. And hopefully you will see how nice some of this can be. If I take x squared plus 20x plus 181 is equal to 0. Let's see if we can solve this. Now, notice the first step is to get your x's on one side and constant on the other. How do I accomplish that? So the 181 needs to go. So x squared plus 20x equals negative 181. Do you agree? Divide all terms by the coefficient of x squared. What's the coefficient of x squared? One. one. If I divide by one, does that matter? No, no es importante. Step three, I have to add the right amount to both sides. So I've got to look at this coefficient of x, divide by two and square it. Now, when we work this out, That's good, man. Divide by 2 and square it. Whoop! Divide by 2 and square it. <laughs> now, let me show you. I want to complete the square and factor at the same time to make it easier for you. What's half of 20? Positive 10. What's 10 squared? So I add 100 here. But if I add 100 here, that changes the problem. So I have to do what? I have to add 100 here. So x plus 10 squared equals what? Negative 81. That's where you would want to, we already factored the binomial square. See, Use it's, the not, it's not so bad. Why do you hate it? This is the problem that this. I don't hate it. I, I don't hate it. Oh, I, I said I used to hate this. Oh. It's a pain when you get all kind of fractions and stuff. Then you, here's the thing. Yeah. If 
you, if completing the square causes you to have fractions, don't do it. The order that I'm showing you with factoring, square property, completing the square, that is the order that you should go through this. If it factors, great, do it. If the square property could be used, because the only x you have is the square or it's contained in the square, do that. Complete the square if you can. If none of that works out well, or it's going to cause you fractions, there's a last resort method that we're going to get to soon. But now that I've got this guy, what would you do? I've got a square. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Thank you. <laughs> X plus 10 equals plus or minus. What's the square root of negative 81? 9i. So what does x equal when you finish this guy? Negative 10 plus or minus 9i. You could try to separate this, but it's not going to help you out. Negative 10 plus 9i, whoop to do Negative 10 minus 9i, who cares, right? What you will notice here, and we'll talk about this more later this semester, is that when you have complex solutions, they occur in conjugate pairs. Because look at this. Negative 10 plus 9i, negative 10 minus 9i are what? Conjugate. Complex conjugates. 